tiyo han maupay kaburton han Voice of the World Media Network of Eastern Summer News Service. Ang rededication, ang singbahan, ang mahal nga berhen, ang imkulada konsepsyon, ang giwan Eastern Samar. Higit pa pa na nga tayo, ang maupay kaburton, ang Voice of the World Media Network o Eastern Samar News Service. Maupay nga adlaw, haaton nga tanan. Maupay nga patron giwan. Hikami nga mga giwananon, sobrait amon kalipayan, yan ang adlaw, tungod kay amon kapistahan in honor of Our Lady of the Immaculate Conception. And at the same time today, we are rededicating our church to our Mama Mary, Our Lady of the Immaculate Conception. If you may please all recall, sometime in 2013, during the Super Typhoon Yolanda, our church was totally destroyed. We were so hopeless. Pero tungod, handa mo ng mga bulig, suporta, kalooy, handa mo ng mga tao. And today, we are rededicating our church, Our Lady of the Immaculate Conception Church, to our Blessed Mother and to all the people of Giwan and to all the people of the world. This was totally destroyed during the Typhoon Yolanda. And now, because of so many people who helped us, who supported us, especially the United States government, the National Commission on Culture and the Arts, the bishops, the Diocese of Borongan, and the people of Giwan and the people of the world who were able to restore our church. Now, more than ever, kami nga mga taga-Giwan, sobra good it amon kalipayan. Diri may express it amon mga kasing-kasing, it amon kalipayan yan na kay it amon singbahan na hibalik. That time, after the typhoon, Rauran Amon Kabido, we were so hopeless because our church is the landmark of Giwan. It was a 15th century, it is a 15th century church. Sanglit iini kami, so bright Amon Kalipayan. Nagpapasalamat kami han nga tanan nga mga tao nga binulig ha Amon. Sanglit kami nga mga taga Giwan, we will remain our being hospitable, our being magnanimous. Most probably, damo at binulig haamon yung mga taga-Giwan because if we go back to history, Giwan hosted to so many events in the world and events in the Philippines. Magellan landed in Giwan. We hosted them. We hosted the Americans. We hosted the white Russians. And we were so hospitable, so many people. And maybe this is the reason why kami nga mga tagagiwan because we extended our heritage of kindness. And maybe this is the reason why binalik ka amon. We were so kind to the world and now the world is kind to us. So we are so happy and I hope you, you will always be there for us. Anakon liwat pagpasalamat, han nga tanan nga mga giwananon, din hiha giwan, nga naadtuit gawasit giwan. Ginpakita ni Juan Pakigusa, Haamon din higaan ni Hagiwan. Ano yung suporta nga iginhatag, labi na good hiniyana, nga pagbalik han aton simbahan. Ano yung ginbulig para an nga tanan mahibalik, an aton sound system, an nga tanan nga naghatag han era mga efforts, sacrifices, nga to han mga giwananon, din ni Hagiwan, nga gawasit giwan. Ginpakita niyo ano yung paghigugma han aton bungto. Gimpakita niyo nga bisan kun harayo na kamo diri lagi hapon kamo na ikakalimot han bungto nga iyo gintikangan an akon dako nga pagpasalamat ta iyo nga tanan nga tanan nahihimo ini tungod han iyo mga bulig labi na god it amon kalipayan hit pagbisita ha amon hanaton apostolic nonsho i think this is the first time in the history of giwan nakinan hian aton papal nonsho Gabriel Kasia, 
Thank you very much for coming. And we will always remember this in our hearts. Your coming here will be a landmark again in our town's history that once upon a time with the rebirth of our church, uh, the Church of the Immaculate Conception, no other than the alter ego of the Pope visited us here in Giwan. Damo po masalamat. God bless us all and God bless Giwananons. Thank you very much. It's fiesta time once again as we comm commemorate the Fest of Our Lady of the Immaculate Conception. This occasion is made more meaningful with the rededication of our church. Naguba handilobyo pag-agi hangidadakui nga bagyo to ever hitland ang bag o Yolanda. Pero hahani, makusog sugadhan aton pagtuo na tindog aton singbahan tungod han mga bulig nga ginhatag haaton. Kita nga tanan indako gihapon nga nagpapasalamat pinaagi han pagbisita paghatag haaton han honor han aton minahal nga papal nonsyo. Indeed, we are blessed. We giwananons and the whole of Eastern Samar. Damo nga salamat han mga bulig, damo nga salamat han grasya. Maupay nga patron ha aton nga tanan. Mopay nga patron, han maanyag ngan mabaysay nga bungto han giwan. Ini nga aton special media video coverage, kini nga aton kapiyestahan ngan celebration iton rededication it aton mabaysay nga simbahan in naging posible darahan damo nga mga video sponsors, nga mga generous people nga taga giwan also. So i-flash na manit ira mga ngaran, pinagihaira naging posible nga may data Um, video coverage iton aton uh, celebration niya ng adlaw um, two persons nga karuyag three persons nga karuyag ko agad hindi on siyahan he at aton vice governor vice governor Maricar Sison Gutisan ngan han iya gopuhon nga asawa Sir Chinchin Gutisan thank you so much han pag-alaw han voice of the world media network nga magkamay ada in channel ngan hiyagiwan channel 13 and of course we would like to to thank in a special way an aton ma husay nga mayora mayor analyst gonzales kwan ma thank you so much mayor nga handal you ini nga iyo suporta nga han mga masunod nga mga ngaran nga ifa flash nam hit on screen
brothers and sisters in Christ, in this solemn rite of dedication, let us ask the Lord our God to bless this water created by his hands. May the grace of God help us to remain faithful members of his church, open to the spirit we have received. God of mercy, you call every creature to the light of life and surround us with such great love that when we stray, you continually lead us back to Christ our head. For you have established an inheritance of such mercy that those sinners who pass through water made sacred die with Christ and rise restored as members of his body and heirs of his eternal covenant. Bless this water, sanctify it as it is sprinkled upon us and throughout this church. Make it a sign of the saving waters of baptism by which we become one in Christ, the temple of your spirit. May all here today and all those in days to come who will celebrate your mysteries in this church be united at last in the holy city of your peace. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord.
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, whatever was written previously was written for our instruction, that by endurance and by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to think in harmony with one another in keeping with Christ Jesus, that in one accord you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another then as Christ welcomed you for the glory of God. For I say that Christ became a minister of the circumcised to show God's truthfulness, to confirm the promises to the patriarchs, but so, the, so that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, therefore I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. The word of the Lord. in the desert of Judea. This was his thing. Reform your lives. The reign of God is at hand. It was of him that the prophet Isaiah had spoken when he said a herald's voice in the desert prepare the way of the Lord make straight his paths. John was clothed in a garment of camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist. Grasshoppers and wild honey were his food. At that time, Jerusalem and Judea and the whole region around the Jordan were going out to him. They were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they confessed their sins. When he saw that many of the Pharisees and Sadducees were stepping forward for this bath, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who told you to flee from the wrath to come? Give some evidence that you mean to reform. Do not pry yourselves from the claim 
Abraham is our father. I tell you, God can raise up children to Abraham from these very stones. Even now the axe is laid to the root of the tree. Every tree that is not fruitful will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you in water for the sake of reform, but the one who will follow me is more powerful than I am. I am not even fit to carry sandals. He it is who will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand. He will clear his threshing floor and gather his grain into the barn. But the shaft he will burn in unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. It's a great joy for me to be with all of you in this beautiful uh, solemnity in which uh, we rededicate uh, the Church of the Immaculate Conception in your uh, beautiful town after the disaster of Yolanda in 2013. And I want to express my heartfelt gratitude to your Bishop, Excellency Monsignor Crispin Varquez, that invited me long ago and accompanied me and welcomed me in your name so warmly. And so I express to him a deep, deep gratitude. In the same time, I want to honor the presence of your mayor, of your governor, of the distinguished official, both of the government, of the army, men and women in uniform. It's always beautiful when there is a collaboration between the church and the government because in different capacities we are all at the service of people, citizens and believers at the same time. And I'm so glad to have so many priests today. Thank you for your presence in this beautiful Eucharist. I see so many religious uh, sisters. They are also very important in the life uh, of the community. I greet the seminarians and especially all of you, dear brothers and sisters in the Lord. My presence uh, today is a, a sign of the presence of Pope Francis. You know Pope Francis? wanted to visit the Philippines, especially when he learned about the disaster by Yolanda They affected so much you and Leite and all the country. And four years ago, he wanted to come in this area to show his solidarity, to encourage 
each one of you. And today, with this uh, beautiful uh, reconstruction of this uh, church, we feel his presence, his greetings, his gratitude, and especially his blessing. I have brought to you a gift, but has not arrived. I sent by post some days ago to be sure that uh, it would be here, but in the coming days, and this is a good thing, you can come to your parish priest, Father Edwin, this is so very good, and each one of you will receive an image of Pope Francis to remind of this special day and also to pray for him. At the back, you will find a prayer for the Holy Father. He should be always accompanied by our love and by our prayer so that he can perform his uh, duties with joy and guide the church in this uh, very important moment of the history. And uh, of course, I'm so glad to see that uh, what seemed to be impossible has become possible. When the church was destroyed, maybe very few of you were thinking that it would be possible to have the church back. But in fact, it is now back, strong, solid, able to endure for centuries ahead. And this is also something very important because uh, it shows that the church is part of the history of the culture of this country who made the soul of the Filipino people. We are preparing to celebrate 500 years of the arrival of Christianity. And it's good that there was also a possibility to work together between church and state so that this heritage could be preserved. In 2007, there was an agreement between the Vatican and the Philippines. And this agreement was ratified in May 2008. The Philippine government, represented by the National Historical Commission of the Philippines, and the Holy See, the Vatican, represented by the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines, both recognize that, I quote, the cultural heritage of the Catholic Church in the Philippines constitutes a very significant part of the cultural patrimony of the nation. This kind of cooperation has been possible because of this agreement. And I would like to acknowledge today, especially, the role the, of the National Museum, represented by the assistants uh, and other dignitaries, in uh, making this uh, re reality of the reconstruction possible. This is a sign that when we work hand in hand, miracles happen. And this is an encouragement to continue in this way. I would like to make three simple <coughs> reflections for today. The first, when the church was missing, all of you were a little bit sad because the church belongs to everyone, is not the property of the bishop, of the parish priest, of the church. The church are we. When we enter the church, we don't say, may I? Because we consider that it is our home. And in fact, all the most important moment of our life and 
as a community are blessed in this place. Baptism, confirmation, first communion, marriage, funerals, sorrows, joys. This is the place in which the community, fiesta, found themselves together. And we realized that is our common place because in the eyes of God, all of us are his children, his beloved children. And so we call each other brothers and sisters, even if we don't belong to the same family. But when we come here, we say brother and sisters, children of God. We discover that we belong to each other because faith make of all of us so different, united. Church means communion, family, unity, solidarity. Why you bring at the offertory some gift, some money for those who are in need to be used for the people who don't have many possibilities but still are brothers and sisters. And this is very beautiful that we consider the church as the place, the house of our family where we can meet and share the joyful moment of life and the difficult moment of life. And the fact that for some years you missed this place make you understand that if the church is not there, something is lacking. It's not the same because we belong to each other and we want to celebrate together. And this beautiful, this image of a church destroyed but now rebuilt. Is it not the image of the resurrection? We contemplate Jesus on the cross, but we know that death is not the end because Jesus is risen from death. We are afraid of bad things, of evil, but we know that evil is not the winner. The Lord is the one who in the end wins. And if somebody says to me, Father, my life is like this church when it was destroyed by the typhoon. Many things happen, many sufferings, many sins. I am destroyed. I would tell, don't worry. Jesus came to give life back. As this church is back, your life could be renewed. Your life could be rebuilt. You can be a new person, a beautiful person, in spite of all mistakes and sins. Because the Lord is the one who heals, who forgives, who gives us hope. And this is very beautiful to find reconciliation with God. At the beginning, all of you were sprinkled with holy water. It's a sign that the Lord comes to purify, to renew, to give new life, new hope. And any time 
you enter this church, you pass by this church, think, as this church was rebuilt from ruin, my life could be renewed by the Lord, by the grace of God. This is very beautiful because it gives us hope, give us future, give us a new way of considering life. But there is also another important aspect. The church is important, sure, and we are rejoicing of this beautiful historical building. But the church is not stones. The church is each one of us. This church is dedicated to the Blessed Virgin, Immaculate Conception. Where was the first house of Jesus? In the temple? No. The first house of Jesus was in the womb of Mary. Where does the Lord want to dwell in a house of stones? No. He wants to dwell in our life. He wants to find space in our existence. And we are preparing to celebrate Christmas. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem, it was said that he couldn't find a place and had to be born in a manger. He couldn't find place. When he comes this Christmas, will Jesus find place in our life? There will be an open door. He will find a home ready to listen to him, to welcome him, to stay with him, with prayer, with renewed life. In this sense, your church is beautiful because also is dedicated to the Immaculate Conception. Anytime you enter this building, remember that as Mary was the house, the home of Jesus, each one of you, each one of us, should be the home for Jesus. Somebody will ask, but how can I be the home of Jesus? Like Mary, very simple. How Mary became the house of Jesus, the temple of Jesus, the mother of Jesus, how? Just saying yes. She said yes to the message of the angel. She said yes to God, yes to his word, yes to his requests. Anytime we say yes to God, we become the home of Jesus. Jesus enter our life. And it's beautiful to look at Mary and pray to her, Mother Mary, help me to say yes to God. Even if sometimes he asks something which seems difficult, impossible, you will be the mother of Jesus, but I do not know even a man, said Mary. The Holy Spirit will come. Trust in God. Say yes. He will accomplish his work. When Jesus asks us something difficult, say yes. It's easier when we see somebody in need 
to turn on the other side and continue. But this is not say yes to Jesus, because Jesus said, any time you are doing something to the thirsty, to the angry, to who is in prison, to who is sick, you have done that to me. How easy is to revenge when we have received something wrong, but this is not to say yes to Jesus, because Jesus tells us, forgive as I have forgiven you. Sometimes it's difficult to say yes, but it's beautiful because we find peace and we find joy. Mary was full of joy because she was able to say yes to God. Let us pray that this celebration today, this reconsecration of this beautiful church will be an occasion for us to rediscover that we belong to each other, that we form a family, that we are brothers and sisters. But let this be also a way in which we repeat with Mary, to Jesus, to God, thy will be done. Be done to me according to your word. Here I am. I am your servant. Be done to me according to your word. And may you find in this act of faith your peace and joy. And may the blessing of the Holy Father accompany this day, this special day, and be an encouragement to repeat the promise you have done the day of your baptism so that your life, our life, can be renewed, could be beautiful again as this church. If we believe, nothing is impossible to God. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things. Let us ask the saints to support our prayers to God, the Father Almighty, who has made the heart of his people faithful temples of his spirit.
of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints make our prayers acceptable to you. May this building, which we dedicate to your name, be a house of salvation and grace, where Christians gather in fellowship, may worship you in spirit and truth, and grow together in love. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Father in heaven, source of all holiness and true purpose, it is right that we praise and glorify your name. For today, we come before you to dedicate to you this lasting service, this house of prayer, this temple of worship, this home in which we are nourished by your word and by your sacraments. Here is reflected the mystery of the church, the church is fruitful, made holy by the blood of Christ, a bride made radiant with his glory, a virgin splendid in the wholeness of her faith, a mother blessed through the power of the Spirit. The church is holy, your chosen vineyard. Its branches envelop the world. Its tendrils carried on the tree of the cross, reach up to the kingdom of heaven. The church is favored, the dwelling place of God on earth, a temple built of living stones, founded on the apostles with Jesus Christ, its cornerstone. 
The church is exalted, a city set on the mountain, a beacon to the whole world, bright with the glory of the Lamb, and echoing the prayers of their saints. Lord, send your spirit from heaven to make this church an ever holy place, and this altar a ready table for the sacrifice of Christ. Here, may the waters of baptism overwhelm the shame of sin. Here, may your people die to sin and live again through grace as children. Here, may your children gather around your altar, celebrate the memorial of the Paschal Lamb, and be fed at the table of Christ's word and Christ's body. Here, may prayer, the church's banquet, resound through heaven and earth as a plea for the world's salvation. Here, may the poor find justice, the victims of oppression, true freedom. From here, may the whole world clothed in dignity of the children of God enter with gladness your city of peace. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We now anoint this altar and this building. May God in his power make them holy, visible signs of the mystery of Christ and his church.
incense in your sight. As this building is filled with fragrance, so may your church fill the world with the fragrance of Christ.
light of Christ shine forth in the church and bring all nations to the fullness of truth.
brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts of powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith.
therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Crispin, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have blessed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. churches on this earth, let us repeat as Mary our fiat, our yes, with the words that Jesus gave us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord 
Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Papakaginhawa. <laughs> Paro kita katanahin mga tens. Okay? <laughs> Mahuman gap ini, ngan pamati ko pinanggugutom na kamu. Pero kuti ay nalaka pasinsya para mahuman itong atong celebration. So maupay nga aga ay yung atanan. My brothers and sisters, we have so many people to thank. And without them, we would not have been here today to celebrate this historic event. And let's begin with one, okay? with the National Museum team. And they are a different breed, very professional and knowledgeable. We can just imagine how much talent, time, and patience they have invested into the entire restoration process. Mom always has always been here, vividly recalls, and it must have been during the first week they arrived here, and someone asked her what they were doing, and she told the guy, she said they were here to restore the church, and the man looked at her as if she has three heads, and said, you're not going to do it and it's not getting to happen and I myself thought that the restoration would take at least 15 years and I was wrong and here we are my brothers and sisters all taken aback and overwhelmed with joy that this church is given back to us awesomely restored and so we owe our sincerest gratitude to these people and all those who worked for and with them to make the restoration of this church a reality. And I would like to acknowledge the presence of many of them who are here today. Those from the National Museum who made it here today, headed by Dr. Ana Maria Teresa Labrador, the Deputy Director General of the National Museum. <clears throat> Reverend, uh, Reverend Father Rene Haviliana, one of the Board of Trustees, Engineer Hainab, Aimi Atelero, Chief Administrative Officer, Mr. Robert Balarbar, Supervising Administrative Officer, Ms. Raquel Flores, Camille Calano, Virgil San Mateo, and Bernie Eroles. They also have with them Dr. Nicole Che, senior lecturer, lecturer from Greenway Center of the University of Melbourne, Australia. And I would like also to acknowledge the representative from GSLM Construction and Trading, who did mostly the structural part of this church, Mr. Emil Amiel Luna. And uh, since Director Jeremy Barnes could not make it, I would like to call on Dr. Ana Maria Teresa Labrador from the National Museum. His Excellency, the Most Reverend Giordano Gabriel Casha, Apostolic Nuncio. The Most Reverend Father Crispin Varquez, Bishop of Boronga. Uh, this, um, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, maupay nga aga. On November 8, 
2013, Super Typhoon Yolanda made landfall in the Philippines here at Giwan with enormous force, wreaking great destruction to this community and devastating its ancient church, the foremost religious, cultural, and historic landmark of the town and the pride of all Guianons. Across a period of six years since the calamitous event, the hope of the town and of many throughout the country and the entire world that this parish church of La, uh, Immaculada Concepcion would rise again and have its former glory restored and its significance to the nation as a declared national cultural treasure preserved was steadily realized. It was the privilege of the National Museum of the Philippines with the support of concerned national government agencies and of the government of the United States of America through the Ambassador's Fund for Cultural Preservation under the U.S. State Department to take the lead in carrying out the task of restoration, which in actual fact was a highly complex program of numerous activities, the scope of which was unarguably unprecedented in this country. The outcome, visible now for all to see, is a church once again intact and whole, reconstructed according to the traditional methods and where this was not possible in ways sensitive to heritage conservations. The first priority being to facilitate enhanced structural resistance to future natural calamities for the safety and preservation of lives and of the ancestral legacy of faith that this church represents where the tangible manifestations of its long history and outstanding artistry were painstakingly brought back to the best condition possible while remaining faithful to their perceived original intent or design. The National Museum of the Philippines expresses its gratitude in particular to the U.S. State Department and the U.S. Embassy of the Philippines under former Ambassador Samuel Goldberg and Ambassador Sung Kim, who couldn't make it this morning, and the University of Melbourne through conservator Dr. Nicole Tse, historian and, our, of course, our, um, our uh, trustee, Father Rene Javeliana SJ, who's just there, visual artist Rafael uh, Guy Custodio, who put everything back to looking like this, and craftsmen from Giwan. So I would like to thank Mr. Jim Vasquez, uh, Mr. Froilan Garibiles, and Mr. Alfredo Menosa, the contractor J.S. Lim Construction, the late parish priest Father Moises Mel Campo Jr., and, um, and of course the current parish priest Father Edwin Lanuevo. The, um, most Reverend Father Crispin Varquez, Bishop of Borongan. Within the National Museum, the project was carried out under Director General Jeremy Barnes, also couldn't make it today, uh, myself, um, and uh, with engineer Jainab Altelliero, Mr. Roberto Balarbar, Dr. Mary Jane Luis Bologna, Ms. Camille Calano, Mr. Nicolas Quadra, Mr. Nelson Aquino, and Mr. Virgilio San Mateo, among many others. This project is dedicated to the people of Giwan by the National Museum of the Philippines with the hope that this church will continue to be cherished by the community. From this day of free dedication on the Feast of Immaculate Conception and be appreciated anew by present and future generations locally from throughout the Philippines and from around the world. Damo na nga salamat. Although none of them cannot come at the last minute decision, we still would like to extend our sincerest and heartfelt gratitude to the United States Embassy in the Philippines who gave the bulk of the funds for the restoration of this church. 
the restoration work would have been impossible without their financial help. Now we are blessed with the presence of an altar stone with the relics of the martyrs of Japan. Yun po yung dinala ni Reverend Father Rene Havillana at ibinigay po niya kay Archbishop His Excellency uh, Papal Nuncio at nandito po siya sa atin nasa mesa altar. And Reverend Father Rene Havillana, a priest of the Society of Jesus, has, was the one who brought us this altar stone, as he said, a gift from the Cheswit residence community of the Ateneo de Manila University. And he gave us also the certificate that says, it is a symbol of the spiritual bond between the Society of Jesus of the Philippines and the people of Giwan, whose ancestors, Jesuit predecessors, had the grace of serving from 1595 until 1768. So I'd like to acknowledge the presence of their member, the representative of the Society of Jesus, Reverend Father Rene Havillana. <laughs> Reverend Father, kindly extend our sincerest gratitude to the Jesuits of the Philippines, and your society is most welcome to come and continue what you started in Giwan and in the Diocese of Borongan. Now, we would also like to thank all our benefactors and sponsors and everyone who in one way or another has helped us make this historic event and the Fiesta celebration, of course, a huge success. And special thanks to our municipal mayor, Honorable Mayor Annalisa gonzalez Juan. Thank you so much. And the family of Manu Anton Manalin Altar Arganda, please stand. We would like to acknowledge you, the Fiesta Hermana this year. Thank you so much. So before we end our celebration, we would like to hear a few words from our beloved Bishop, His Excellency Crispin V. Varquez, Bishop of the Diocese of Burongan. So, maupay nga udto ay yung atanan. Maupay nga patron. Six years ago, Super Typhoon Yolanda made its landfall on the prosperous community of Giwan. Although Giwan is now new to the experience of, is not new to the experience of typhoons, the aftermath of Yolanda left significant imprints on the locality like no other. It destroyed almost everything, including this church where we are here now, gathered. It destroyed our houses, physical structures, but not our strong faith in God. As a song composed after Super Typhoon Yolanda, it says, Pagtuo mo, pagtuo ko, diri mababag o, bisan san o. Your faith, my faith, will always be firm and will never change. With the help of the government of the Philippines, through the National Museum, and with the Embassy of the United States of America, ang simbahan sa Giwan, Ang Immaculada Concepcion, now restored and even becomes better. So we thank the countless people who assisted us in our time of need. And we will be ever grateful for all of you. And grateful also for the wondrous blessings that God has sent us through generous individuals and institutions. It was announced just recently that our Apostolic Nuncio to the Philippines, His Excellency, the Most Reverend Gabriel Giordano Caccia, will be given a new assignment 
as the permanent observer of the Holy See in the United Nations in this very historical occasions. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. His presence in our midst is the presence of our beloved Pope Francis. Thank you, Holy Father, the people of God in the Diocese of Borongan, and the parishioners of Our Lady of the Immaculate Conception, extends a profound affection and loyalty to you. I also thank the clergy, the religious men and women of the Diocese of Barongan, and all the parishioners of this parish in Giwan. Thank you also to the team ministry of Our Lady of the Immaculate Conception Paris in Giwan, composed by Father Edwin Lanuevo, Father Arturo Gonzalez, and Father Bernard Alhibe. And I thank also for the presence of our go government officials, the LGU of Giwan, headed by Mayor Annalisa Gonzalez Juan, the leaders of the provincial government of Eastern Samar, with our Governor Ben Lebardone, and our Lone District of Eastern Samar, Congresswoman Fe Abunda. To all of you, in behalf of the Diocese of Borongan, we express our profound gratitude. God bless you all, and God bless you more. On behalf of His Excellency Crispin B. Vargas, Bishop of the Diocese of Burungan, on behalf of my brother priest of the Diocese of Burungan, and most especially the people of God in Giwan, I would like to extend my most profound gratitude to His Excellency, the Most Reverend Gabriele Giordano Cassia, the Apostolic Nuncio to the Philippines, for gracing this historic occasion. Your presence with us has indeed made this day a very memorable day. So my brothers and sisters, please stand and let's give His Excellency a big, big round of applause. We will be giving a certificate of gratitude and appreciation to His Excellency, the Most Reverend Gabriele Giordano Cassia, also to Director Jeremy Barnes. In the play, on behalf of uh, Director Barnes, we have Mam Ana Maria Teresa Labrador, and also to GSLM Construction and Trading. Also on behalf, we have Mr. Uh, Amiel Luna as representative. And may I ask the Chancellor of the Diocese to read us the text in the certificate. <laughs> Diocese of Brongan, Parish of Our Lady of the Immaculate Conception. Certificate of Gratitude and Appreciation is hereby presented to His Excellency, Most Reverend Gabriel Giordano Cassia Didi, Apostolic Nuncio to the Philippines, for his invaluable contribution to the restoration of the La Immaculada Conception Church in Giwan, Eastern Samar, a national heritage church in the Philippines, after it was destroyed by Super Typhoon Yolanda in November 2013. For this, the people of God in the Diocese of Morongan and the parishioners of the Parish of Our Lady of the Immaculate Conception in Giwan will be forever indebted and grateful. Given on the occasion of the solemn blessing and rededication mass of the La Immaculada Conception Church, Giwan Eastern Summer, 
on the solemnity of Our Lady of the Immaculate Conception, the patroness of the parish, December 8, 2019. Signed, Reverend Father Edwin Silla Nuevo, moderator of the team ministry. Signed, Most Reverend Crispin B. Vargas Didi, Bishop of Porongan. The same certificate of gratitude and appreciation is given to His Excellency Song Yong Kim, U.S. Ambassador to the Philippines. The same certificate of gratitude and appreciation is hereby presented to Mr. Jeremy Barnes, Director of the National Museum. This will be received by the Assistant Director. And the same certificate of gratitude and appreciation is presented to G.S. Lim Construction and Trading. As a final note, what do we expect from here? Food. <laughs> Advent is about expectation, hoping and praying for greater things to happen. And in the presence of His Excellency, the Apostolic Nuncio, we as the people of God in Giwan, with our bishop and priests beg for your prayers and blessing that this restored church be elevated one day to become a minor basilica But we are hoping, that's precisely the point of Advent, dedicated to Our Lady of the Immaculate Conception. Amen. So, kahuman hini nga santos nga misa, nga tanang kamu, all of you are invited for a luncheon at the gym. We will have lunch together to celebrate our fiesta. Pwede liwat kamu magpintos para makompleto at pista. Ngan hai yung atanan, giupay, ngan maris yung pagsaurog, han atun patron. Please stand for the Salve Regina.
I ask uh, your bishop to give together with me the apostolic blessing that this day will be memorable, not just as a thing of the past, but as the beginning of a new life in Jesus. The Lord be with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. The Eucharist has been offered. Let us go in peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Ang rededication, ang singbahan, ang mahal nga berhen, ang imkulada konsepsyon, ang giwan Eastern Samar. Higit pa pala nga tayo, ang maupay ang kaburton, ang Voice of the World Media Network o Eastern Samar News Service.